guys, it's Adana. I have a really quick announcement for you. If you're trying to get into PA school, I want to help you. That's why I'm offering a 60-minute consultation session with me personally via the phone or video chat where I will help you personally develop a plan to help get you into PA school. For the video with the full details on how we're going to get that done, go ahead and head to the description box below because there'll be a link there or it will be pinned to the first comment on this video. Or you can always just go on to my website at adanathepa.com and schedule your appointment today. Hope you enjoy the rest of this video. What's up you guys? It's Adana and I am back with another video for you guys. Today I'm gonna be making a video about what major is the best major for PA school. And I know many of you who are pre-PAs or um, you haven't even finished graduating high school yet, you're going into college, you're trying to figure out, well, I wanna be a PA, so what major is the best major for me? So this video is definitely for you. So my main thing that I always tell everyone is that anything in the sciences or allied health is what my school called it. Um, it was pretty much anything that wasn't a pre-med major. So nursing, uh, pre-dentistry, I don't really understand. I, oh, there was another one, uh, healthcare management. Those, those different things that had a very core science base, but yet they still had some extra intangibles added on because it wasn't strictly science and pre-med. Those majors are great majors to go into um, if you really wanna be a PA. I say the sciences because they will get you most if not all of your prerequisites for PA school. Um, many PA programs, uh, it's highly medical and medicine based. It's just like going to your first two years of medical school or all four years of medical school just crammed into two years. So it's best for you to have a medical background. I say do this because if you were, let's say uh, a music appreciation or um, a fine arts major, you may get like some of your core sciences, you may have to do like biology or some type of lower division science course. You may have to do a sociology or some one of the entry division um, social sciences, but you're not gonna get all of your upper level and upper division science courses and social sciences that you require for PA school. For instance, you're not gonna have to do cellular and molecular biology. You're not gonna have to do microbiology, which a lot of schools require. You might just need to do like a chemistry or biology. So if you graduate with that degree, then you're gonna have to take time to now go back to either your school, which probably costs a lot of money, or go to a community college, which still is money that you shouldn't even necessarily need to be spending. And take a whole bunch of classes over at least 12 because I know most of them are like, there are 12 different prerequisites that are required for PA school just to get in. And that's extra money that you're, you could have kind of saved yourself if you already know for sure that you want to be a PA. If you don't know for sure that you wanna be a PA and you may wanna do something else, then definitely go ahead with the major of your choice and you will be fine. So just to prove my point to you guys, I have my handy phone and I am going to show you guys exactly what I'm talking about with respect to just uh, a biology major and um, just like a random PA school. So I'm gonna just choose a random PA school's uh, prerequisites to see what they require and I'm I'm gonna choose a random school's um, biology major to see what they offer you in that major and see how it lines up. We're gonna compare and contrast and then you'll be able to see exactly what I'm talking about, okay? So I'm going right now, I don't know what, we're gonna go to like paea.org because they are just number one with respect to having all the information needed for PA school. like anything that you may wanna know, you should definitely go to that website because it has all of the schools listed, developing programs, what they require, what they don't require. So I'm here, um, this is, we're gonna just choose, I have a couple of schools listed that don't require a biology a bachelor's degree. I'm gonna do Pacific University, I have no idea. It's in Oregon, Pacific University in Oregon. They already have continuing accreditation status. So let's see what their requirements are. Okay, so we have their science coursework. They require anatomy and lab, biology, chemistry, organic, physiology, 
um, it has checked off all of the different levels. So you need a lower level chemistry and an upper level chemistry, which usually is like biochemistry for some schools. Um, they don't, re oh, they require you to have your CPR. So that's something else. Math, they require statistics and sociology. So those are just general requirements for Pacific University. And then let's um let's check some another one out too. Let's go to who are we gonna go to, you guys? Um let's go to Marquette in West Wisconsin. Marquette University in Wisconsin. Let's see what they have. Oh, they don't really have that many requirements, you guys. So they have um, a lower level anatomy, biology, they chemistry, um, math, medical terminology. Okay. And you know what? Actually, I'm going to take this off because this says not required, but I'm not, I'm going to take it off because that's going to show, it's going to show me all the schools that don't allow you to just go straight into PA school from high school. So let's go to Bryant University. No, they have provisional status. So let's go somewhere that actually is continuing. Baylor. Okay. So they have anatomy, biology, genetics is what they have listed there. They have um, microbiology, chemistry. They want you to have biochemistry, um, general chemistry, and organic. Physiology, they want you to have an English, a statistics, and abnormal psychology, okay? So now let's go to like a random, just regular undergraduate college or, you know, just some random college. Look at me. All right, so what college we're going to go to? Let's go to LIU. Uh, oh, BS in biology and LIU. There we go. All right, so if you do biology, what are you gonna get? You're gonna get your English composition. Isn't that one of the requirements that they had you required for, um, I think it was Baylor. Um, you're gonna have math, so you can do, it, has, it requires you to do eight credits in math, so I'm pretty sure you can get your statistics in there. And then you have general and inorganic chemistry. You have pre-cal, you have cal, um, you have organic chemistry, you have your general biology, you have your micro, no, which one is this? Molecular biology, that's cell biology. Um, you have biochemistry, genetics, and that's it. 120 total credits. And you can, pro you can probably switch out some of these biology courses as well. So right there, you have the majority of all of your prerequisite courses laid out for you in your courses required for you to graduate. So just make things easier on yourself. Honestly, if you really know for sure that you want to be a PA, then look at the schools that you're um, trying to apply to in terms of PA school. See what their requirements are. Um, it's not going to change drastically within the next four years that you're in school. Um, usually changes happen within like a five year period. So it's not gonna like truly change dramatically, but you should always keep up on it because you don't want um, any new changes to affect your chances of getting in. So definitely go ahead, do that, look at the school, see what they require. And then after that, go and see the school that you're trying to attend for a college for your undergraduate degree and look at those signs science majors, look at those allied health majors, and choose the right one that's going to give you the majority, if not all, of those courses that um, the schools that you want to attend require for your prerequisites. And you're set. That's it. That's all you have to do, you guys. So I hope this was very helpful. If you have any further questions requiring like, you know, me to actually send you a message, um, go ahead and hit me up on Instagram, or you can just leave a comment here or send me an email. Um, all that information is in my about me section, so you can catch that there. Um, but if not, just drop a comment. And I hit a like if you like this video, and don't forget to subscribe. All right, thank you guys so much for watching. I will talk to you later.